All right, uh, good afternoon to those of you on the East Coast. A good afternoon also to those of you on the West Coast. I'm your host, Brandon Troy, also co-creator of Movers and Shakers Unlimited. Thanks so much for joining us wherever you are watching from, whether it is live or you catch us you know, after the fact. Um, if you have been keeping track of the promos that we have been running, you'll know today that we do have a terrific show on tap for you guys. As you will know, Awesome Con is in the rear view mirror, so to speak. However, we do have two guests um, with us, two special guests with us to be able to reflect back on this year's 2024 edition. Now, um, just to give you guys just some insight for those who may not be familiar uh, the few of you that may not be familiar with uh, with Awesome Con, it is a uh, pop culture convention that takes place in Washington, D.C. Uh, it was founded in 2013 by Ben Penrod, uh, and uh, it sees well over 70,000 uh, people in terms of uh, fans of all aspects of pop culture, whether we're talking about film, television, uh, games, comics, you name it, they have it. So uh, it is, you know, a... Uh, uh, Weird to to think of of how how much this show has uh, has grown because I you know was there I can say that I was there at the very first uh, awesome con and and just to see what it's grown to be now is you know uh, uh, quite amazing so uh, but with that out of the way let's get into each of our uh, special guests that we have so the first guest that we have is perhaps not only known for his role as Aaron in the Ninja Versus series, but also for his role as the lead in the memorable GoPro-styled story, A Ride in the Park, and the popular horror anthology sequel, VHS 2. Not only that, he's also the creator of the intriguing post-apocalyptic digital series known as Ithaca, the miniseries. And if that weren't cool enough, our guest is also an artist creating works of art that feature a unique gunshot aesthetic. Uh, works of art, by the way, that were featured at this year's Awesome Con. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome back to the show, Mr. Jay Saunders. Let me bring him on now. What's going on, Jay? Hey, everyone. How's, how you doing? And, and uh, I apologize for an incredibly, incredibly messy room. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> no worries. It's been no worries. Uh, a very, very, very busy several weeks working on several different projects. So Indeed, and I would love to for yeah. us to be able to get into some of that today. So absolutely. All right. Awesome. So the next guest that we have uh, last, but certainly uh, not least is an accomplished, a comic book artist and writer known for his work for Archie comics. Um, as a graduate of uh, uh, the Kubert school, our guest began working for Archie immediately after graduation, his writing for uh, of the love showdown series from 1994 will receive our guests widespread attention. However, that is not all. Aside from his notable work in the series Archie Meets Kiss, Archie Meets Batman 66, Archie versus Sharknado, Red Sonia and uh, Vampirella meet Betty and Veronica, and a wide variety of other titles. Our guest is also the creator of Archie's first openly gay character, Kevin Keller, and is also the co-creator of the hit series uh, Die Kitty Die. Of course, there are many other accolades that I could rattle off, but we will be here all day um, with, you know, the other other impressive things that, you know, our uh, other guest has done. So it is my pleasure to welcome onto the show, Mr. Dan Parent. Dan, what's going on, sir? Hey, how are you? Good to see you again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, as I said, guys, we have Awesome Con in the rearview mirror. Uh, it's been, what, uh, a few weeks at this point. It's hard to believe that, you know, that much time has passed already. Time is fine, which I'm sure many of you guys can agree with, you know, the other things that you guys have going. So just to start, can you, you know, just talk about how the 2024 show uh, went for you guys? Whoever would like to go first, Dan or, or Jay? I'll let Jay go first. Go ahead, go for it, Jay. <laughs> well, it was, you know... I've I've been a very very big fan of Awesome Con for several years. I've been going as um, as a fan. Uh, the other year, one of my films was in the film festival, and I think this is the third time that I've been there as a, a vendor with with my art. Um, yeah, you know it was it was it was a fun year. Um, a lot of great guests. It, the the fun thing about being a vendor there, um, especially when you're meeting people who have the, the three day pass. 
is meeting people who really, really like to spend their time going to every single artist and starting a conversation and getting to know them and really, really investing in your art. Um, and we had several, several people like that this year. Um, we, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough that I had several of the members uh, some of the cast of Breaking Bad who had heard about my art and wanted to stop by the uh, stop by my booth and and chat with me. R.J. Miller, as well as Raymond Cruz, um, you know, they they were fantastic. You know, it was it was wonderful just having. Um, having a, a great number of people who really valued uh everyone's artwork and the the effort that everyone has put in and so to and finding every way that they can to support us absolutely absolutely dan yeah it was great um i think out of the i guess there's been about 11 awesome cons now i i think i've been <laughs> to seven or eight of them so I, yeah. I don't, i've only missed a few awesome cons but i've been to quite a few of them um always a good show always solid uh show there and uh, yeah, it was great. They, uh, you know, uh, this one felt like it was like really uh, fully back from COVID. The first couple, you know, were oh, a little bit still, you know, we were still had a little bit of overrun from COVID. Uh, this one sort of felt the first like really like non, you know, you didn't really feel any of that. Um, and it was good. It was good. I was excited because I got to um, yeah, meet, uh, get my photo taken with Josie and the Pussycats, which... Um, I've met them all separately at times, but I've never met them all together. So even though I work for Archie, the, the the fan in me was still happy to get a photo with them. There we go. Perfect. And I signed my comic for them and everything. And that was cool. Um, but yeah, it's great, great show, uh, really good energy. Um, and uh, I was happy. It was really great doing a lot of commissions and things like that, which I always like to do at shows. Um, and uh, yeah, I was really, uh, really uh, had a good time. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Jay, we think we may have lost you just there just for a second. So I, you know, I'll give you a chance to to uh hop back on, just lost your video there for a moment. But um, just to get into our next topic, I was gonna hop in just in just into that idea of why awesome con and I and I feel like you guys, you know, you guys must be psychic because I, you know, you guys pretty much you know dived into it uh uh right off the bat. And so in, in thinking of those said things uh, and talking about Awesome Con, another thing component of it that, you know, I'm curious to, to you know, get from, from each of you, it's always, you know, fascinating to look behind the curtain, so to speak, of, of how things are for, um, for guests, uh, you know, if you, if you have a table at the show and what that, you know, that kit looks like, what, what that, what that uh, kit looks like in order to be able to properly do what you do to have to to have a table at a at a given show, whether it's Awesome Con or any other show. So you know, I'm I'm fascinated, which I'm sure other folks are too, that you know may be striving to do that same type of thing. What that looks like in terms of what is that survival kit, you know, if you will, of of having you know a, a table being an artist at a, at a given con. Um, so Dan, I'll, I'll pass it over to you, um, first. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. once we get Jay back, uh, okay. you know, I love to hear it from him. Yeah. Uh, well, basically, you know, um, as most people know, who know me well enough, I do a lot of shows and, uh, it is, uh, nice being a guest at shows, uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's also a way that a lot of us, uh, you know, freelancers, you know, it, it's a big part of how we make a living too. Um, it also helps promote our work. So when you go to a show, you promote the current projects you're working on. Um, then that along with that in social media, it gives a boost to what you're working on. Um, and as far as the shows go, like some of our shows are easier to do than others. Uh, like I also do a fair amount of international shows, which are a lot of work uh, as, much, as much as I love doing them. Awesome Con is great because it's only a four hour, three and a half, four hour drive from where I live in Pennsylvania. So it's nice to be able to just throw everything in the car drive there, set up, um, then you're there. So that, that, that's, that's really nice for me. Um, because sometimes you don't have that luxury if you're flying somewhere, you have to sort of, you know, you can only pack so much. Um, you can only, you know, uh, set up, you know, what you can fit into your suitcase. So, um, so there's different degrees of, of what you can do at each show. And awesome con is, you know, basically, I won't say it's in my neighborhood, but it's, it feels like it's a close by show. Gotcha. 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 Well, you know, in, 
and, and speaking, you know, to that further, and I know we want to get Jay back in a moment, um, and, and diving, you know, deeper into that, you know, maybe if outside of like the supplies that you have, like with your, uh, with your comics or things like that, you know, are there any other like, uh, perhaps miscellaneous things that, you know, folks take for granted that as someone who is seasoned and having a table at a given show that you're like, you know, over the course of, of years of doing this, you know, I realized that this is something that is like, I have to have to be able to survive the day. Like these are just supplies that, that I need that, you know, perhaps people aren't really thinking of and that, that are taken for granted. And it looks like we do have Jay back, but we'll, we'll punt it over to him in a moment. Uh, well, the basic survival kit is uh, if you're not doing a show, if you're not bringing a friend or having an assistant at a show, uh, you definitely, um, you know, it's right. It's, a, it's it's always a plus to have someone because you do need your bathroom breaks and <laughs> that kind of thing. Yes. And uh, water and snacks are always good to have at these shows as far as your basic getting through the day. Um, but, but basically, it's a matter of just um, having for me, because I, I do um, not everybody does this, but I do a lot of uh, commissions at the shows. Yeah. So as long as I have my art supplies uh, and a full set of markers and all that stuff, I'm ready to go. Um, so in addition to selling artwork and books and all that stuff, um, I have to just make sure that my art supplies are up to par. And for me, that's called big markers. And I have to f make sure I fill them because sometimes if I do a show or do a few shows in a row, and I don't fill my Copics up. I get to a show and my markers are all dry and that kind of sets me back. So, you know, basic preparation for me is just making sure all my air supplies are up to par because uh, that way I can get going when I get there. Gotcha. And, and I'm, I'm guessing from from you sharing that, that there have been issues where you're like, uh, bummer, like th this particular, you know, item that I need in order to be able to complete this commission is not you know, cooperating with me today and, and being able to kind of get in front of that. So, yeah, I've been short a blue marker or a flesh color marker and I don't have it or it's to totally dried up. So I have to like find one, you know, fortunately I have a lot of friends in the uh, artist alley. So it's usually not too hard to do that, but uh, awesome. if, you're doing, if you do an international show and you run out, it's a little different. It happened to be in India where I had to do a, a color commission for my employer at Archie it was for an important uh, like executive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't bring any color markers, so I had to actually find color markers in India. And we looked all over the place for color markers, and we didn't realize they were selling them like in the artist alley, like one aisle over from me. In in the artist alley, we didn't even know. So we were looking all over the like, downtown India, and, and they were selling them like you know one one row over. But that's, gotcha. what, that's how that's what I had to get into, right? Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. Jay, uh, welcome back. Um, just getting into <laughs> just the idea of uh just your con kit so to speak you know if, if i'm going to a con i know that they're like givens that i have that i know that i'm gonna need you know whether it's making sure that i'm properly hydrated you know uh making sure i have comfortable shoes like you know a lot of things that people don't really understand if they don't really go to cons but you know what is yours in in picturing what it what it's what's needed in having a table at a con uh my wife <laughs> there you go there you go. Yeah, you know, being there with my wife, having someone who uh, truly supports me. Um, she is the most positive person that there is. And having someone like that in your in, in your corner is is really, really the most important thing. I've done a few uh, vendor tables at other places where my wife hasn't been there. And it's, uh, you know, when I'm doing all the setup by myself, uh, I have a pretty, pretty large setup uh, with, with all the stuff that I do. It, it's pretty heavy. Um, and I've done uh, some vendor events that were outside where the wind and the rain were just knocking all of my artwork all over the place. And, um, you know, it, it's led to, uh, you know, a lot of foul language. So <laughs> to have someone there who is constantly supporting you, who has just a bright smile on her face, who enjoys, you know, getting dressed up in cosplay. We both do cosplay at the, at the booth because it's just, it's, it's fun for us. We're, we're fans. We're fans of, uh, the characters that we create. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I can't, I can't talk about her enough. About to say, yeah, I put your cosplay up here uh, just now as uh, Jack Sparrow. It's pretty impressive. Oh um, man, yeah. You so, know, when I do the Jack Sparrow, I, I do the, I, I do, you know, I do the full thing. I got, I, I do the, the, the voice, the, the walk, the characters. So it's, it's, it's a fun conversation starter. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, in, in speaking of, you know, this survival kit, you know, so to speak, and 
talking about how that connects to uh, commissions, because Dan, you know, you had brought it up. Is I know right now, Jay, that that I, if I and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you're now transitioning more into doing the commission uh, 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 part uh, these um, with what you're doing based off of, and I'm assuming only by virtue of the nature of how you put your art together, that it just wouldn't be obviously feasible to do it at a con. Um, so uh, can, can you, I'll start with you, Dan, in talking about um, what, uh, uh, what, what does that, you know, typically, you know, look like for you in terms of trying to ensure that, that those commissions are, you know, getting, you know, to their, their destination. I know, and I believe we talked about it briefly before, but I, I'm just curious based off of what you normally see with what you already have that you sell and um, the commissions that are asked of you to, to do. Well, I, I like it when I can get um, people to get, sign me up on their commission or, or I can get my commissions done beforehand. So if people want to contact me before a show, Sometimes they'll ask me beforehand if I can get on they get on my list, which is always a good thing because then I can prep before then. Um, and then at shows, I try and get them done in time for people that are at the show. Sometimes if it's a busy show or it's a, a really detailed commission, I can't get to it until you know after the show, and then I will always mail it out after the show. Um, but I really try to get most everything taken care of at the show, just just to avoid having to do the whole mail-in process when you get home because sometimes I might have another show lined up or I might have another deadline. So I might have to ask them to wait a few weeks before I can get it out. So, um, but it's always really nice when you can sell artwork you already have. I always <laughs> definitely prefer that to sell, you know, artwork that's already, you know, I, I have binders of comic pages and covers and things. So to sell art you already have is great because it's already done. Um, so that alleviates a lot of the work, but people like to have special one-on-one -on -one commissions done at shows. And I understand that because it, to, to them, it's like a specific um, memory of that show. So that is sort of why they like to have a, a specific commission done. So I, I understand that too. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. And here, you know, are a couple of uh, examples of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what, what Dan has done. Um, punting it over to you, Jay. As I said, I want to also bring up this video too, because um, it's, I love the video of of like just the the background of of you doing the artwork here of you know putting it together the whole process with the time lapse here and you mm -hmm. actually you know plays getting the bullet holes in the actual piece of art. So can you talk a bit about that process too of you know trying to now do get into that get into that process of doing commissions now where you don't have the luxury, as I said, of doing it at a con <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. what, what 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 does what is that going to look like for you? You know, in trying to to get you know these commissions and, and make sure that you know they get to their destination, since you you know are kind of now dealing with a backlog since you have to wait. Right. Uh, well, you know, it, it takes me about um, three or four days. So, you know, for those who are who are listening or don't know anything about the process of what I do is um, so I make semi bullet resistant glass and then I'll paint it with acrylics, um, you know, uh, different characters from from different movies, comic books. And then I'll carve my image with a, a Q-tip or, um, you know, or, or a razor blade. And then the final piece is me taking it out to the gun range and actually shooting it um, so I can create the, the shatter patterns. Uh, and it, it takes me, you know, it takes me several days just to make one. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I typically stick with, you know, characters where that sort of visceral response, uh, you know, lends itself to um a, a very very strong looking piece of of art that really creates a you know a strong visceral reaction so everyone loves the joker everyone loves john wick um but when i have someone who comes up with a, a commission depending on the location that they're that they are if they live close to me um i'll, I'll let them know that hey you know once i finish making the glass and 
painting the character, I can take you out to the gun range with me and you can actually shoot the picture for yourself. Um, that way, you know, we can film it and you have your own piece of contributing to the artwork. Um, and I've done this at different, uh, at different shows with, um, you know, with a lot of, uh, you know, I went to a, a shooting competition. It was more of an invitational and made several pieces. It was a, a zombie shooting competition uh, for law enforcement and service members. And uh, once I created all these pieces, we move uh, to another place of the range and they get the opportunity to shoot it themselves. Um, so it's just a fun part of being a part of the creation of your own piece of work. And, um, you know, commissions can be can be challenging. Uh, but, uh, you know, when when someone buys one of my pieces of art or gets a commission, they know that they're they're really, really part of this of this creation of their own piece. Gotcha. 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 Um, so, you know, in, in speaking, you know, to that guys, uh, I wanted to also get into, you know, I always find it fascinating of getting into the, the, uh, the balance of it all of what, what you're there to be able to be committed to and, and, and being there for work, so to speak, fun work, mind you, but still work. And also, being able to feed, you know, the the fan in yourself as well. I know Dan, you were, you know, commenting on on it just now of uh, 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 Josie and the Pussycats of, of of you know having that opportunity. But you know, just can can you tell me what that looks like just in general when you go to a, a given con? Because you know, sometimes it may have it may be placed in a you know a awesome you know, uh, location venue. I know Dan, you know, you just got back from Mexico, Mexico city of being at a con. Um, and you know, sometimes it may be by virtue of who you may have an opportunity of, uh, of meeting there. And so what, what does that normally look like? I know like for me, for example, you know, I may have a commitment in terms of what I want to make sure folks are able to, May, be made aware of and then I have quote unquote I have my selfish day of what would I have that I want to personally do that day and I try to like alternate between those days but maybe it looks different for you guys um yeah I mean I still am a big, a big fan of it of comics and stuff so sometimes I do try and you know get around you know so there's some shows where I'm so busy that I just don't I barely leave artist alley so I don't even see much of the show um that happened in Mexico last week. I didn't really see that much. Although I did get to, to sightsee Mexico City, which was another thing, which was nice. Um, yeah, that was great. I got to see some really nice uh, sights there. Um, so that's the advantage of, of traveling internationally. Um, when I do shows, I like to, um, yeah, I like to look in the, in the, I like to, you know, like San Diego especially, I love to go and look at all the vendors, look at the, the, uh, the comic bins, the comic boxes, um, you know, pick up old books. Uh, I tend to buy a lot. Of, I still tend to buy a lot of books that I don't get around to reading. It takes me like a year to get through my 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 pile because I, you know, <laughs> I, just, I never get to anything. Um, um, during COVID, I was supposed to get you know get caught cut up on all of my my years of reading that I didn't do, but that didn't happen either. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm a fan. I'm a fanboy, so I I I, have, I like to um you know uh, you know if you look at my office, uh, you know, which I can. I've got all kinds of figures and statues and all that kinds of stuff. So, uh, um, but it's a good thing. I, it's a good thing I'm busy at the shows too, because if I was just a, a fan at the show, I would, you know, it's be like everyone else and just buying all, the time, <laughs> all my money. And, um, I, which I do sometimes too. I, I, sometimes I go to shows and as an artist, I like, I like, you know, like a few years ago, I think I was talking to you about this with Ramona Freighton at Baltimore a few years ago. I had never met her. I was a big fan of her work. And I, I, bought about 20 pieces of art from her and yeah. have continued to buy art from hers and, and you know until her unfortunate passing a few weeks ago yeah. um but um yeah so i i uh you know tend to uh go a little crazy sometimes but um you know you don't you don't just because you're in comics doesn't mean you lose your uh you know your your fandom of comics your love of comics so absolutely uh, yeah Cool, cool, and and I, I'm curious because uh, you know a lot of times you know you're you're uh, featured at a lot of these shows as like mm -hmm. you know their premier guest. So are, are you a? I, I, I'm assuming a lot of times you're taking advantage a little bit 
you, you can be honest. You take advantage of it a little bit of, of you know, being a guest saying, oh, it would be cool if, if you guys could somehow set this up where I'd be able to do such and such. Does that like ever like is that ever a thing or or you, do you try to try to not utilize that in any type of way? As far as like it's like sightseeing and that kind of thing. Well, no, I guess. Well, that, yes, to a degree, but also with uh, like, give me an example with with uh, Awesome Con. Like, you know, maybe there's specific guests there where you're oh, like, oh, yeah, well, like with the Josie oh, thing. Totally. But the yeah. Josie thing was being lined up. Well, I, I didn't even know that the 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 three were going to be there until like a couple weeks before. And then they actually put out an ad for the show saying, you know, come get a Josie comic from Dan and have the Josie Pussycat sign it. So it wasn't until then I, that I knew even the three of them were going to be there. So okay. when I found out they were going to be there, I talked to Ben and I'm like, okay, Ben, uh, I need a picture with Josie and the Pussycats. So I felt right. like I had kind of a good in there because right. it sort right. of kind of put me in the promo with them for the show. So I, I was going to definitely take advantage of that. So <laughs> I, I totally did. And it was a good thing I did because they were only together for like an hour or so because – Rosaria Dawson is, you know, she's in like oh, 87 yes. shows. Oh, yes. So she, she had all this like other things lined up. So they only had like a good hour to do the Josie thing. So we had to really get in there fast and um, get our pictures taken really quickly. So uh, I was uh, happy to that. I, I kind of um, got in there when I did, but no, I definitely, when there's a show and there's like a, a, a celebrity or a guest that we think we can get access to. I mean, I absolutely will be the first person to, Say, can I? Can you get me a, a shot with this uh, right. person? And I, don't, and I don't do it that often, but every once in a while, <laughs> there'll be there'll be somebody at a show who, for whatever reason, I just will, um, you know, it'll just something will just go off. Like uh, when I did Dallas a few years ago, um, I remember like Barbara Eden was there, and I loved our Jim and Jeannie growing up, and I was like, I have to, I have to meet Barbara Eden. So they they, they set that up, and um, and even like when I did a, another show a couple of years ago, and you know, uh, Melissa Joan Hart was there with Sabrina. So of course, you know the link that we have with Sabrina is pretty obvious. So, uh, I, I, you know, obviously got to uh, you know got to meet up with her. So, but yeah, no, I have no no qualms about that. And then also the other advantage too, like I was saying, when you go to an international show and you haven't been there before, um, I almost always uh, ask for you know an extra day there just to to see the sights um, because there's always so much to see. I went to, like when I went to Mexico City a couple of years ago. Um, I was only in and out really quick. I didn't get a chance to see much of the city. Uh, this time I was there a couple extra days and got to do all this cool sightseeing. So um, I, I recommend if you do an international show, definitely try and get in on the sightseeing. And normally uh, they really uh, love it when you tell them that because they're happy to host you and they want you to see their city. They're proud of their, their location. So they always seem to be very happy about that. So I'm happy gotcha. to take advantage of it too. Awesome. 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 Um, try to see if I can get, uh, uh, Jay back. Cause I am curious to see <laughs> what that was like. <laughs> having some trouble here, uh, with, with, the. Uh, it's the nature of doing a live show folks of sometimes yeah. the tech doesn't want to cooperate. So I'm going to give him a moment to, to get back on. Cause I am curious to see what that, uh, uh, what that looks like. But, you know, in the meantime, you know, while we're waiting, Dan, uh, mm -hmm. and, and speaking further to, to that, you know, uh, component, is that something that you normally have to, like in the example that you gave with Mexico City, is that normally something that you have to like ask for, or like, as you're saying, it's something that they automatically, you know, just offer and they well, just throw in there? Uh, yeah, this time I, last time I went, I, my, I had to get, I didn't have any, many, as many free days to go. So um, I knew that they did like a tour, but I wasn't able to be part of it because I came in sort of like, you know, the, the Thursday before the show began on Friday. This time I got in a day earlier and on Thursday they were taking everybody to the Mexican pyramids. So of course I was on board for that. And then I had a day after the show to, on my own to go, you know, uh, around Mexico city and see some of the sites. And then uh, also like shows like India too, will always uh, fly you out a day early and fly you back a day later um, because they like to also take you, they, they actually always, they, always, when I go to India, they always plan a day of sightseeing, um, generally. So, which is nice because you don't have to think about it. You just go and uh, see stuff. So. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so and Jay, I wanted to punt it over to you as well. And, you know, I know that you're a big fan of, I mean, we, we, I feel like we have similar fandoms and many of the same things. So, you know, I'm curious what that looks like. You know, you already shared that you cosplay, which is awesome, but, uh, you know, getting into trying to, 
feed you know the the inner geek the fan would have what have you of you know what your fandoms are you know what does that look like you know outside of commitments that you that you a lot of times have at the show well at the convention it's not easy um you know because you get there as early as you can to try to set up and uh you know unfortunately you have such a small amount of time to be able to check out all the other artists that um it you know it feels like you're experiencing the whole entire convention in about 30 minutes so you're so completely overwhelmed uh you know it's why it's helpful to have someone you know like my wife at the booth so we can kind of take breaks and i get a moment to really go go around and meet some of the artists and and take my time just looking at everything that everyone has created um you know awesome con does a pretty good job of making sure that there's a a, a real diverse group of of artists of of creators um so you're seeing a whole bunch of different kinds of styles and it's wonderful to just be able to go and and, and celebrate those um my wife she's also um you know with her being uh enjoying cosplaying i have the benefit of having um you know she, when she goes and cosplays, she'll go over towards the uh, where all the celebrity guests are, and you know she's she's charming enough that she can strike a conversation with them and let them know, hey, you know, my husband he actually has a, a vendor table here, and he's, you know, he's stuck there all day, and this is what he does, and you know, thankfully this year, um, the cast of Breaking Bad they had heard about my art and were absolutely excited to to come down and spend some time with me, um, so it's. You know, when 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 they come over to the table, it, it's fun to just meet them as as artists and appreciate what, you know, the both of you can contribute. Um, and and that's where, you know, for me, I, I, I try my hardest to to keep a straight face and not completely <laughs> geek out. Um, and, uh, you know, thankfully, you know, all of them have have been very, very generous and are always willing to to learn more about what I do um, and, uh, you know, establish a relationship that goes further than just, um, you know, fan and, uh, you know, and artist. Um, it, it's wonderful to create some genuine, genuine friendships from there. And, uh, you know, that's one of the fun things when, you know, when your booth is set up to, to meet your, your booth buddies, you know, the, your, the artists on either side of you. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's fun to hear where people are are coming from, you know, in their lives and what led them to to where we are today. And uh, I I really get a tremendous amount of uh, enjoyment out of that. And you know, if if I have to dress up like Captain Jack Sparrow to start some conversations, then I'm perfectly <laughs> fine with that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you know, with that said, guys, I, I wanted to be able to you know dive into a lot of the things that you have uh, upcoming. Um, you know, Jay, I'll start with you uh, uh, first as go around. I know even outside of um, what you do with your art, I know I touched on it in the intro, but um, you also have what you have going with Ithaca, of course, um, and, and continuing to progress with that. But uh, you have something else mystery thing uh, that's going on as well. I mean, we're looking at what this is a a tease that you gave where you have 1200 storyboard index cards like right right what? yeah so um you know i've i've been working on a feature film for the last two years um completed the script uh you know just a couple months ago and uh just a few weeks ago uh i i completed uh storyboarding the 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 feature um the hope the plan is to film it this summer um, you know, I'm not going to dive too much into the story just yet, but for those of you who are fans of, of horror, of, of Lovecraft, of cosmic horror, um, yeah, you'll, you'll really get a kick out of this one. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm focused on a project, uh, you know, I like to make sure that my DNA is part of, uh, you know, is, is part of everything in there. So I love being able to, to write, direct, act, produce, compose the music. Um, and I've done that with Ithaca for for eight years. So to 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 have another project over here and focusing on 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 the the film format, the film structure, um, it's it's wonderful to expand what uh, I do from those those small shorts into something that is um, you know has has a wonderful arc for characters in the ninety minute format. 
Um, and, and this is, it's a very ambitious project and my team is slowly coming together. Um, and I'm looking forward to being able to, to, to tease more. Gotcha. And I was going to say, if you, if anyone has not checked out Ithaca yet, you guys need to, it is awesome. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to where else that can progress to. Um, but, uh, in the meantime, definitely check it out. I know it's available on your uh, YouTube channel. Um, Jay, uh, and I, now it's starting to come together too. You uh, is all the that Lovecrafty and stuff. You priming people for 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 something. Now now it's starting to come together. I'm like, what? <laughs> like I like Lovecraft. I'm like, okay, what what is this about? I get it now. I get That's it. right. Yeah. yeah. All I'm right. Sure you're priming. Yeah. You're priming you people. Know, follow follow my stuff. You'll see me doing location scouts, and you'll you'll get you know you'll get breadcrumbs here and there and uh, I'll, I'll take you on a journey cool cool and uh dan i mean we we all I, I joke you joke with you about this all the time but i know you have like i feel like i need to do where's Waldo? where the world and dan is going to be next week or or like in the next month but if you like to share you know what the remain a slate is uh, yeah, well, actually, I've got a little bit of a break, which is nice. Uh, my first real break this year. Um, so I've got uh, C2E2 next month, but that's like a month sure. away. So that's good. Sure. I've got two one day shows. I'm doing King Con in the city. Yes. I'm uh, doing that one. Um, they're doing a lot of uh, my variants there, um, variant exclusives at this show. So I'm doing a couple of specific ones for the show. And then I'm doing uh, Lehigh show, Lehigh Valley show in April also. It's a one day show in Allentown. Um, but yeah, I'm basically right now I am uh, playing catch up <laughs> on my deadlines because <laughs> I have all these like, uh, you know, covers that are waiting to be finished. Got it. Um, so I've been really just uh, cranking on those and uh, working on a special project that will be announced very soon. Um, okay. I can't, I, I was hoping that I could announce it now, but I, Archie hasn't given me the okay yet, but it's with a. It's an Archie project, but it's with a very big name writer who writes works for DC and Marvel. He's a huge oh, name; okay. you'll know it immediately. And it's uh, first time I've ever worked with him, and it's going to be uh, very, very uh, exciting. Awesome stuff! Awesome yeah. stuff. So, uh, Dan, Jay, thank you guys so much for uh, you know carving out time on your Sunday to be able to you know talk about how uh, uh, awesome Con was, and of course, you know your your future projects that you have uh, going. Um, before I let you guys go, can you tell folks where they can find you? I'll, I'll punt it over to you first, Jay. Go ahead. Go for it. Sure. So if you want to check out my Instagram, it is my first and last name. So Jay Saunders 333. Um, that way you can see all my film uh, film stuff. There's a link to my uh, YouTube channel with all of Ithaca. And if you'd like to take a look at my art as well as all the videos of me shooting these pieces, you can check out my other Instagram page, which is Jay Saunders Art. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Dan? Yeah, you can find me. Um, my Instagram handle is Parent Daniel, as is my Twitter or X or whatever the hell that is now. That's my, <laughs> that's my handle there, too. And on uh, Threads, it's Parent Daniel. Uh, and then um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, you have to just Google that. And then uh, my website's danparent.com. So um, I'm, I'm easy to find on social media. So. All right. Cool. Well, there you guys have it. Again, I want to thank uh, Dan Perrin and Jay Saunders for hopping on on this edition of uh, uh, Movers and Shakers Unlimited. I'm your host, uh, Brandon Choi, also co-creator. Uh, you can find me at uh, Brandon Choi ENT on, on Twitter or X, of course, uh, and also Brandon Choi underscore ENT on IG. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be safe out there and uh, see you guys soon.